Good day. My name is Justinus and in this video I am going to introduce you to Hydrostatics Calculator for SolidWorks, developed by Floatsoft. Hydrostatics Calculator is an application that externally interfaces with SolidWorks and provides some statistical naval engineering tools for designing ship hulls. Hydrostatics Calculator will work from anything from a toy boat model to an aircraft carrier as long as you follow a few simple design rules. In this first tutorial, we will be looking into the SOLIDWORKS module preparation, operational principles and the user interface. To begin using Hydrostatics Calculator, first create a hull model in SOLIDWORKS using whatever methods you find most suitable. Keep in mind that your model must consist of a single SOLIDWORKS body. If there are multiple bodies in your model, you can merge them into a single one using various SOLIDWORKS features such as Combine. Also, your hull model must be filled, not hollow, as you can see in this example. Hydrostatics Calculator does not feature advanced flood mechanics and therefore any unfilled space will be treated as a cavity that will be flooded as soon as the waterline reaches it. Finally, the bow of the ship must be pointed along the Z-axis of the SOLIDWORKS coordinate system, as you can see here. Once the hull is prepared, you can go ahead and run Hydrostatics Calculator executable. In a few moments, the main window of the application will open. Most of the functions are disabled at the start. To enable them, you must first click the Analyze Hull button, which allows Hydrostatics Calculator to collect the basic information about the hull you designed and write that information to a configuration file, which is stored next to the application executable. In a few moments, the analysis will complete and will unlock the full functionality of Hydrostatics Calculator. If you look at the SOLIDWORKS feature tree, you will notice that Hydrostatics Calculator has created a Move Copy feature, which positions your model so that the bottom of it touches the top plane, the stern touches the front plane, and the right plane intersects the hull at the center line. This feature is essential for the correct functionality of Hydrostatics Calculator and should never be tampered with. You can add, delete or modify features before and after this feature, but whenever you want to run calculations with Hydrostatics Calculator, please roll the feature tree so that Hydrostatics Calculator positioning is the bottom most active feature. If you accidentally delete it, click Analyze Hull button on the main window again to recreate it. At the left side of the main window, you will see the basic information about your hull, such as length, beam, height, and so on. Below, you can see the Documentation button, which opens the user manual on floatsoft.net. Next to it is the Settings button. The Settings window allows you to select or deselect which calculations the application should perform. As you can see, by default, we have Length on Waterline, Beam on Waterline, Draft and Displacement enabled. Let's leave these selections for now as they are. On the left side of the window you can see the Number of Sections field. When you have enabled any of these four bottom calculations, Hydrostatics Calculator will slice the hull into equally spaced cross sections. This field controls how many slices will there be. A higher number produces more accurate results but also takes more time to compute. Below, you can set the number of decimal points you want to be displayed in your results. In the menu below, you can set the size of the center of gravity and center of buoyancy markers that will be visible in the SOLIDWORKS model view. The next menu changes the graph line type which can be important when you want to display your results graphically. The Precision field adjusts the error margin for various calculations that Hydrostatics Calculator will perform. Lower values will give you more accurate results but would also take more time to compute. It should be mentioned at this point that all the settings you change as well as the input fields in the main window of Hydrostatics Calculator are automatically saved to a configuration file which is stored next to the application executable. 
This means that you can close down Hydrostatics Calculator at any time and the next time you launch it, all your settings will be just as you left them. The configuration file is specific to a currently open SOLIDWORKS model and will be saved using that model's name. This means that you can have different settings for each different model while the newly opened models will have default settings. Back at the main window, we have checkboxes that control the visibility of various components in the SOLIDWORKS model view. Show original hull toggles the visibility of the original hull model that you designed. It is equivalent to SOLIDWORKS show height function. Next, show processed hull toggles the visibility of a virtual copy of your hull model, which is used by a hydrostatics calculator to quickly manipulate its orientation and immersion, as well as analyze its various properties. Your hull model is displayed in two colors. The green part is above the waterline, the gray part is below the waterline. Waterline is always the top plane of the SOLIDWORKS feature tree. Please note that keeping this option enabled throughout calculations will slow them down significantly. So unless you are okay with that, it is recommended that you keep this checkbox disabled until the calculations are complete. Next two checkboxes toggle the visibility of center of gravity marker, which is green, and the center of buoyancy marker, which is blue. The center of buoyancy marker position is determined automatically. However, the center of mass must be set by the user in this area of the main window. It is grayed out right now, but will activate as soon as we enable any of the calculation modes. Note that setting the center of mass coordinates is not mandatory for most calculations, but only for calculating the longitudinal and lateral writing moments. Finally, show waterline checkbox toggles the visibility of the waterline, which coincides with the top plane. The next area of the main window houses the controls for the calculation modes and user inputs. Each specific mode enables or disables some of these fields depending on which pieces of information are required to perform a certain calculation. The button on the right side of the menu will provide you with some hints on when and how to use the currently selected mode. As you can see, I have enabled the first available mode and the valid fields have been activated. As soon as the information is entered, you can click the Run button on the bottom of the window and if the input fields are valid, Hydrostatics Calculator will attempt to find a solution. In a few moments, you will see the results on the right side of the main window. Again, you can go into the settings and select whichever hydrostatics you need for your specific scenario. This concludes the basic introduction of the Hydrostatics Calculator user interface. In the next few videos, we'll be taking a look at the various calculation modes that Hydrostatics Calculator features, as well as the options to display and export the results. Thanks for watching!